I'm Molly B.A. Um, and I'm a Guernsey lady born here. I'm 87 years old and I was aged 9 to 14. That's five years of occupation. Red jash plant. Is that yeah. what you want? Yeah, that's right. H. 87. Uh, my name is Matt Tashel. I'm 77 and I was here during the occupation. I mean, my parents were quite concerned, especially when you look across the sea and you could you know, feel it see France sometimes, you know, Jersey and the islands. And then there was a lot of uh, worry, more so because there were boats coming over with refugees from France. This is when they got over, right over into France, the Germans. And there was one quite concerned that these, these refugees that came said that it was everywhere the Germans were instructing so much damage and they've had to move out France. But there was, I suppose to children of our age, oh, my sister was seven, there wasn't a great deal of concern except that we didn't know if my father would have to go and join the army, you know, for the services. That, that was the main worry. Yes. Well, that they were in, in uh, Germans were in France and all that. Yeah. Getting closer to you, you know. Yeah. But uh, and then they're talking about evacuating. Well, theirs and Don were at St Peter's School. I yeah. was at St Saviour's. So, so we weren't split up. They put me with the St Peter's crowd, and we were more or less together, you know. In a last-minute spate of panic. Ireland authorities gave islanders a two-day notice to decide whether or not to leave the island themselves or indeed send their children away to the UK for an unknown period of time. On the 28th of June, tragedy struck. The Luftwaffe, flying low over the Channel Islands, noticed a line of trucks. Assuming the trucks to be full of Allied supplies, the pilots decided to bomb them. Because we live so close, we were just a street away from the seafront. And we'd just gone into a grocery shop along our road and we were looking over a wall and we heard the planes, but we were hearing several planes beforehand, so but we stopped and we looked and we saw three planes coming and I had an a cucumber and was waving. And then we saw the marks and we, I actually saw the machine gunning on the side because they were just going straight for the harbour. And they, we ran into a house right opposite nearby and they had a, they had a, a cellar and we stayed there. There was a, quite a few people came in there and you know, ran in and we just stayed there hour, hour and a quarter, hour and a half. Right course but my mother was with us, my sister and I, we just hugged each other. I could hear the bangs and the bombs and, the, and of course when we came up we looked over the wall again and you could see the smoke um, and could hear sounds like it must have been it was panic down there. So many got killed underneath the, the lorries of Tuatos which the Germans said they thought it was manual um, ammunition. But um, there were 35 killed and many injured. And awful stories I've read of since. Heroes down there as well. My grandfather was down there, but he was safe. He came back very sad because um, he knew a lot of the drivers. It was a daily routine with tomatoes exporting to the UK. On the 30th of June, two days after the bombing of St Peterport, 
Luftwaffe pilots landed on the island of Guernsey to test the defence mechanisms. After no response, the islands were deemed to be defenceless and a platoon of Luftwaffe airmen were flown to the island that evening. Senior German officer Albert Land asked to meet with the bailiff and the island was declared a German occupied territory. In the following days, the remaining islands of Jersey, Alderney and Sark were also brought under German control. Um, so when they landed, I suppose in a way, it was a bit of relief in a way. In another way, it was frightening. But um, we heard they'd arrived at the airport planes and they'd just come and taken over and the, the laws were on the paper the next day. We were having uh, our evening meal, my mum round the table, and four German soldiers walked in, and uh, just they just walked in, and my mum said to my dad, oh, I hope they walk their feet before they come in, and one of the so young soldiers said in perfect English, yes madam, we did wipe our feet before we came in, I can assure you. My mother, when she knew the Germans had arrived, first of all, she never left the house. She would not meet a German, she was so frightened. So that sort of instilled a little bit of fear into my sister and I, you know. But, but when you saw them walking in the street and you just walked by, they seemed as if they were natural, you know. So it didn't worry us children, but it did my mother. And the grown-ups, I think the women more than the men, especially if they were children in the house. I wish that Franklin D. Roosevelt had lived to see this day. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. By the 8th of May, it was announced in Guernsey that the Allies had won the war. It was printed in a Guernsey newspaper in the German language that Hitler was dead. I, my father suggested I wrote to uh, the Prime Minister, um, Winston Churchill, and lo and behold, I had a reply back, and he said, I have been deeply touched by all the messages of goodwill which have reached me at this time. Thank you so much for your kind thought. Winston Churchill, May 1945. That was through my father mentioning that, to thank him really, um, I wrote, on behalf of all school children, including myself, we express our gratitude and thanks for our liberation and freedom after five years of hardship. May God bless you and your loved ones. I remain a faithful admirer, Molly Finnegan, 13 year old, so I was almost 14, so 14 years, yes. And that was my excitement really, <laughs> after liberation, which liberation was the excitement as well. When came May the 8th, uh, we heard on the radio, our dear Channel Islands will be freed by Winston Churchill. Um, great excitement was building to build up. Uh, we had a radio that came out of hiding and it was on the edge of a window and there was more of the neighbours came. But that was May the 8th. To me that's liberation day actually. But May the 9th the next morning we just woke up very early and wondered what was going to happen. So we went down to the harbour, not three, four minutes walk away, but we were stopped because of the barbed wire there naturally and the Germans were there with their rifles ready to any phone in trouble. Uh, we were the first ones, one of the first ones there because some of the townspeople then they knew that we could see the boats outside so we thought now's the time to go down. It must be that somebody's going to come off those boats. 
So we waited and waited for an hour or more, longer than an hour. We kept on and we were getting a bit impatient because we wondered what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, looking up the jetty, long jetty, we could see something going on. And we said, look, it looks as if there's some, something happening. There's somebody, some people coming. Oh, it looks like they're all, yes, they're all marching. And then, of course we couldn't get there at that time. And then all of a sudden, somebody must have opened that barbed wire gate. It opened up and of course we just ran towards these men. And we just ran and of course when we got to them we just went mad. We knocked their hats off, their guns, their rifles, everything went. And they were crying, we were crying. We were singing eventually, but they were so upset as well, I think so emotional.